Hello and welcome to tonight's LOL Sports Roundup. We're going to cover a few player moves. Well, actually, a couple player moves and a couple organizational decisions. Um, just keep in mind, yesterday's video, there was a bit of an audio issue at times. If that occurs again, feel free to comment down below because if it happens a second time, I am going to have to be looking into a different editor. Apparently, ClipChamp um, does have this issue sometimes and it isn't one that's easily resolved. So if that does occur again, just comment down below if it cuts out and maybe others will uh, verify and we can go from there. But news. So heretics allow Evi to leave. Evi, the first Japanese um, import in a major region, I believe ever. So it was a hype thing last year and honestly, it was a big disappointment. Um, Evie is long past his prime, but he has interesting champions to play. And we only saw the Lilia once in summer. Um, and it's unfortunate because stuff like that, Lilia, Mordekaiser, Rumble, Urgot, like when Rumble isn't even meta, Evie would play it and things like that. Like that was what made Evie world class at international events over the years. But he's long past his prime. And frankly, these numbers are atrocious. And that's me being nice about it. 2-3 KDA, 6-8 CS per minute, 53-6 KP, very bad. Um, 342 gold per minute, about 19% of gold. 400 damage per minute, that's 20% of damage. Someone could say, oh, but he's playing weak side. And don't get me wrong, Vathio ate a ton of these teams this team's resources at, in the mid to late game. That's why his CS was so high. That's why his gold per minute is so high in the percentages. So it does, eventually, you have to look at it even out. But still, in the early game, when Evi is in lane, he was down on average 705 gold, 16 CS, and 305 XP. Think about that. So every game, Evi went even. If you can think back and say, oh, but Evi played good in this game. Or he was okay in this game and he didn't lose lane. Well, in the games he didn't lose lane or win it, he, that's offset by a game where he was down 1,400 gold. Like, gapped. Five solo kills, six champions played in 20 games. That's the disappointing part. He didn't get an opportunity to play a lot of different stuff. Um, and if he did, maybe things are slightly different. But either way, he was lackluster. Heretics were lackluster. Um, what I'm going to remember about this roster is when they could not figure out how to use window blinds and use black electrical tape. To cover their window if you did not know that um, I believe it was I found it on Twitter it's probably still up there um, a very interesting moment out of people that um, well frankly a couple of those players Avi Yankos are older they sh should have known how to use window blinds um, so definitely weird uh, Dignitas announced Dove will play mid lane and uh, XU is playing in the jungle but because it's a re-sign or a promotion. I'm not talking about it. So, Dove, these numbers are from Spring with IG. He was replaced by Cryon. Um, Dove had played top lane with Liv Sandbox in 22. Played with IG in 23. Um, he's meh, to say the very least. Uh, Korean import, mid laner. That I don't think um, is very good. Uh, these numbers are not good at all. Um, 26 KDA, 78 CS per minute, 56 1 KP. So, IG, I understand why SKM had a lot of solo kills. The bot lane was active, but that also means that Dub should be able to farm because action's happening away from him. And instead, he is getting under 8 CS per minute. So, on average, he's behind. Um, he's not involved. 365 gold per minute is about 20.5% of the team's gold. Uh, 459 damage per minute was 22% of damage. And then he had 13 champions played in 34 games. He's a wide champion pool. But I've said this before. I like wide champion pools. The champion ocean is great. I think it's one of the biggest and most important things to a player when it comes to determining who's good and who's not. But if you can't play 13 champions and get it to where you're eight and a half CS per minute or and 70 KP or you're dealing 25% of your team's damage up to 26% and you're getting 22% of gold like you're actually like doing things and, and being relevant then we have to say to ourselves you know what 13 might be too much let's just play half of that seven and play them well 
Um, I'd rather you play seven champions well than 13 like um, crap. So Dove will join Rich on Dignitas. DRX have, uh, so Carter is gone, their general manager. Carter was the GM of DRX's world championship team. So he is a world champion general manager. Um, he also made his case on T1 over the years prior to that, um, being accredited with uh, many split championships and uh, LCK championships, things like that. But in the three years he was with DRX, and this is why it's such a fluke, and but a great story for Deft and Barrel. A massive upset. It's truly why I believe Worlds is not necessarily who the best team is, is the winner. It is just the best team on that patch. And this is case in point. Three years um, with DRX, Carter went 40 and 68 as the GM. The team would go 10 and 19 in playoffs and regionals, but 19 and 7 at that Worlds and win. So um, in the end, I would say he succeeded. Now, I don't know if he left DRX because DRX are going through a rebuild, still rebuilding and not you know, investing. Instead, they're bringing up their academy players that were good last year. Um, so that is an angle to take, but it seems like maybe there was a, a, a you know disagreement on where to take the team because the guy literally got you a world championship. Maybe you should, um, you know, do, I mean, I'm not saying do what he says because the team obviously had a crap win rate, but it's just like, what are we doing here? Um, so... We'll see what DRX, this is the worst time also, because a lot of the players are already accounted for. So now you bring a GM in and it's like, hey, um, this is what you get. Uh, if you can find somebody that nobody else wants, go right ahead, but this is what you get. And it's going to be uh, tough sledding for whoever replaces him. JDG have brought in Mafa as the head coach. Mafa was a longtime coach of IG. In the last couple years has been with Genji as an assistant or alongside SCORE. Um, regular season, he's been great. 125, 44, and 6 based on the teams and splits he's accredited for. Like I said, with IG, I believe he was the head coach for quite a lot of it. But in uh, Gen G, he was uh, co-head, well, pretty much assistant. I mean, score was the one that got a lot of the credit. Um, he was not the coach of this split they won. So he was accredited on Leaguepedia for being the coach of spring 2018, but then not Worlds. So I do think that's something interesting. Uh, 67 and 45 in playoffs and regionals, 34 and 26 at international events. Um, with IG, I believe he went 10 and 10 prior to joining Gen G. Um, but let's see how he does, right? Uh, you know, some people are heralding him as the T1 killer. I don't. Um, I, th I, I don't. That's kind of weird. Um, only because like JDG. The way JDG is rumoring to go with their roster, it seems like that roster is not going to be as good as last year's. Um, not even close. Um, 369 out, and then the rumors range from decent and good top laners like Breathe, all the way to literally bringing up an academy player that they think is good, which could be true, but um, doesn't look very good to, the, to, to many people. So if that's the case, JDG may have eh, some issues, but... You know, they they invested heavily last year, right? That roster was a super team. That roster was the best team in League of Legends in 2023, in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, it didn't win Worlds. That patch did not fit them as well. Uh, and it's simply because 369 hadn't played Rumble before. Um, and Knight refused to play Azir. So, you know, that's a disaster. That's, a, that's just a disappointment. And um, that's for another time, but... That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.